So over the course of the next 15 minutes or so, I want to provide you with an, an update on our company, giving you not only a good sense of what the investment hypothesis would be, but to talk mostly about our pipeline, the technology, and the progress we've made in the clinic, especially in comparison to what we presented last year at this meeting. So Caladrius, as a company, has a cell therapy platform that is based on CD34 cells, and we have developed an advanced clinical pipeline from this platform technology. Two of the three programs that we are developing have been given the equivalent of cell therapy breakthrough designation in the development jurisdictions in which they are being studied. We have proprietary field-leading technology in very high unmet medical need, global indications, and a very strong intellectual property portfolio that we believe, as I'll point out in a few moments, is actually unique in some respects. Over the course of the next 12 months, we have a number of value-creating events that are coming up, including data readouts from several of our programs, as well as a number of other regulatory and operational milestones. And we're managed by a seasoned team that has noteworthy experience in the, in the field of cardiovascular medicine and cell therapy. And as of the end of the second quarter, we reported a strong balance sheet with over $33 million in cash, no debt, and a cash runway projected through the middle of next year, including the initiation of a large phase three program in the United States for our no option refractory disabling angina program. So our management team is, is here, the rogues gallery of folks that you see, and we have quite a lot of experience developing products internationally, but the one point I wanna make about this slide is that our chief scientific officer, Dr. Douglas Lasordo, is one of the, I'll call it, inventors of the therapeutic application of CD34 from his academic days and has spent the last uh, 20 years of his career studying and developing these cells for therapeutic use. So we do benefit from having the world's leader in CD34 for medicine as our chief medical officer. And because of that, we're also uh, supported by a large group of esteemed cardiovascular physicians from around the world. I affectionately call these folks card-carrying members of the cardiovascular mafia. These are the folks who do really all of the breakthrough work in cardiovascular medicine in all types of technology, and they're strong advocates for our program. So now let's talk about the platform first and give you a basis for the science, and then we'll talk about the programs individually. So first, CD34 cells have a very well characterized mechanism of action. This is not the case for many cell therapies. Uh, these are naturally occurring vascular repair cells. They're endothelial progenitors, and their job is to provoke new microvasculature. So it's angiogenesis of the capillary system, and they provoke new capillaries. They reperfuse tissues that are being starved of oxygen and nutrients due to an ischemic event. The cells have been studied extensively in the clinic. Uh, we're, we're approaching about 1,000 patients in controlled studies that have been uh, studied using CD34 across a wide variety of indications. In, uh, by numerous investigators in a variety of centers in a variety of countries. So this is not the work of a single individual, but rather a very large group of folks who have shown consistent results that are compelling, and that is that single treatment of CD34 cells elicits a durable therapeutic effect, and we've never seen a cell-related adverse event reported. The process for preparing the cells and administering them is actually simple, fast, it's economical, and it's already been scaled for a phase three and for a potential commercial use. It's four days from vein to vein. There is no genetic manipulation. There's no ex vivo expansion. So what we have here is a patient who is the donor, has their CD34 cells mobilized from their bone marrow using several days of GCSF therapy, and then the donation of their mitocyte uh, mononuclear cells is taken through an apheresis process. That sample of monocytes is sent to a central processing facility, where over the course of about 12 hours, the cells are sorted, they're concentrated, and then they're formulated in a, in a medium that is appropriate for the indication for which they're going to be used, and then they're sent back to the center where they're administered to the donor who then becomes the patient. The site of injection and therefore the formulation is dependent upon the site of injection. And then finally, 
We have a very robust intellectual property portfolio with nine granted U.S. patents, 23 granted foreign patents, and a number of other patents pending. And importantly, these patents cover the pharmaceutical composition of the expand or rather non-expanded CD34 positive, CXCR4 positive stem cells. And so that's a composition of matter type patent, and that's something that many stem cell therapies does not, do not enjoy. So based upon this platform technology, we've developed three clinical programs. A phase three program that's about to be initiated in the United States in no option refractory disabling angina, or NORDA. A program that's running now in Japan called in, in critical limb ischemia, and a program that's about to be reported at AHA uh, in, the, in the next month or so in coronary microvascular dysfunction. So let's start with the NORDA program, and this is a program that enjoys an RMAT designation here in the United States. Um, refract, no, no option refractory disabling angina really is recurring angina that results from chronically impaired cardiac blood supply. These are people who have large vessel disease that has been uh, successfully treated through stents or bypass and available antianginal drugs, and yet their angina persists, which leads to the fact that they have microcirculation deficiency, and that makes them available for our treatment because there really is no other available treatment for that condition. Uh, we have uh, a myriad of clinical data from phase one, phase two, and even a partially completed phase three that was done by a previous uh, sponsor. And these results are published and demonstrate statistically significant improvement in exercise capacity, reduction in angina, reduction in, severe, in severity of angina, and most importantly, a reduction in mortality. So that's the holy grail in cardiovascular medicine, along with a pristine cell safety profile. And just to remind so those of you who may have not seen this previously, here's some of the data from that large, randomized, placebo-controlled phase two trial, 168 patients that was done, that shows clearly a statistically significant improvement in exercise time from baseline at six months and 12 months. And by the way, based upon our negotiations with FDA, the change in exercise time at six months is the primary endpoint for our, fight, our phase three trial. You can also see uh, similar results in uh, reduction in angina frequency, and very importantly, a two-year mortality benefit or an increase in survival, which is uh, truly important. So a single administration of cells provides an impact that seems to last at least two years and most likely beyond. So we're now about to initiate a phase three trial a single trial that will qualify this product for registration here in the United States. As I mentioned, the primary endpoint is also an endpoint that was studied in phase two. The population being studied is identical. The cell types are identical. The method of manufacture is identical. The inclusion-exclusion criteria are identical. The dose is identical. So this is really a confirmatory phase three trial. We expect to start sometime early next year. It'll take about 39 months from first patient in to top line data. And there is a, a scheduled interim analysis after 50% of the patients have completed their six month follow up. Cost of that trial is going to be about $70 million externally over the next three to four years. And we do have the, the funds available to start the trial and run it through uh, the middle of next year, but we will need to raise additional funds in order to complete this trial. The next program is our CLI program in Japan. This enjoys a Sakagaki designation in Japan, which is the Japanese equivalent of RMAT. It also has an ATMP designation in, in Europe. And critical limb ischemia here is severe arterial obstruction, which impedes the blood flow to the lower extremities. It's often a, a comorbidity of diabetes. It is uh, the most advanced stage of peripheral arterial disease, and it includes severe rest pain and non-healing ulcers. Uh, these patients have a very high mortality risk, and most people don't understand that. They think CLI is, is, you know, is a serious disease, but not a fatal disease. I'll just refer you to this chart here, which shows you that CLI has a higher mortality rate than most known cancers. And that's important to keep in mind because these patients are really desperate for a treatment. We are treating people who are in the sort of moderate to severe range. Uh, that is 
Rutherford 4 and Rutherford 5. Rutherford 6 patients are beyond salvage, and so we're focusing on R4 and R5 patients. And I can show you some previous results from patients of this type, which show that single administration of CD34 cells in this population of patients results in the achievement of a CLI-free state, which seems to be durable for at least four years. And you can see from the laser Doppler image the fact that we are, in fact, reperfusing the tissues. So we're saving limbs, saving lives. Similarly, a study done in the US shows a statistically significant improvement in amputation-free survival, which is another endpoint that's historically been used. So we're running a trial in Japan at the moment. It is a 30-subject CLI patient and five Berger's disease patients trial, which is registration eligible under the Sakagaki designation in Japan. The endpoint is the one that you saw in the first of those last two slides, continuous CLI-free status. A single treatment, intramuscular injection, uh, we're very close to completing enrollment over the course of the next three to six months. Enrollment should be done, and we've been reporting and remain consistent in reporting that we expect to have results sort of middle to this time next year, which could lead to a product in Japan approved for commercial use as early as 2021. And this just gives you a sense, since this is an open-label trial, I can show you the results of the Burgel cohort to date. Burgers disease is a disease for which there is no spontaneous um, remission and where patients often very rapidly go on to amputation and frequently to death. You can see here with still a number of patients in follow-up, we've already shown 50% of the patients having a positive outcome, which is truly an extraordinary result in Burgers disease. And then finally, our program in coronary microvascular dysfunction. CMD is not dislike Norda, except that these patients never have any discernible large vessel disease. So there's nothing to stent, nothing to bypass. But they clearly have debilitating angina. It's a condition that more frequently affects women and often younger women. And these people have a prognosis that is similar to those who have severe large vessel disease that have significantly elevated risk of MACE and all-cause mortality, especially in women. So this is truly an emerging women's health uh, disease. One of the ways that this is diagnosed is by measuring something called coronary flow reserve, and that's also a mechanism to show how well the heart muscle itself is perfused and whether we can actually increase cardiac uh, perfusion. There are no approved products for CMD uh, today. So we're completing the ESCAPE CMD trial. This is a fully enrolled program. It's an open label proof of concept trial that measures CFR in patients after a single intracoronary injection of our CD34 cells. It's being done at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles and the Mallow Clinic. And we have some preliminary results from the first third of the patients that shows that we have actually increased CFR up into what most people would consider the normal range for this first third of the patients from a baseline which was below normal. This is the first therapy that's ever been shown to increase cardiac uh, CFR. And this supports the microvascular repair mechanism of these cells. And of course, this, is, this correlates with an improvement in angina systems. Our chief medical officer likes to tell the story of a woman who was so debilitated at the beginning of the study that she could barely uh, live a normal life. And three months after her treatment, asked her physician if she could buy a bicycle. So you can see the dramatic impact that this has. The, Almost final, and I say that probably 18 of the 20 patients will be completed by then, will be reported at AHA as a rapid fire oral presentation. We're very happy and pleased that that was accepted as such, and that will be on November 16th. And we'll be looking then to talk to FDA about the next steps in this development program. So this is a summary of the milestones that you'll see from us over the next several months related to the various programs, including uh, clinical initiation of the phase three program, the completion of enrollment in CLI, and then ultimately CLI data, and then CMD data, and then talking about the next steps in that program. And there are a number of other operational and regulatory uh, milestones that could pop up over the course of that time frame as well. Our finances are very simple and straightforward. We have enough money to continue all of the programs as described through the middle of next year. And of course, if we delay 
the start of phase three. That could be extended beyond it, and we'll be looking to raise money to complete all these programs in the near future. So back to where we started, um, a strong investment case, a company that has demonstrated significant clinical advancement since this time last year, and we're now poised with several products that could become commercial over the next several years, including Norda and CLI in the respective jurisdictions. Thank you very much. I don't know if we have time for a question or two, but I'm happy to take them if we do. Do we have time for a question? We have 42 seconds for questions. If, if not, people can catch me outside the, uh, the door. I'll turn it over to the next uh, speaker, who's a, uh, an old friend. Hans, you want to come up?